category of microbes that we need to talk about is protista. So we've talked about bacteria and viruses and fungi. These guys are a whole separate kingdom. Most protista are usually referred to as parasites. Uh, that's kind of how we know them, unfortunately. They're algae, protozoa, slime molds, water molds. Um, they're kind of a catch-all sort of a kingdom. These are little things we, we seem to see under the microscope most of the time when we take up a drop of water. Um, for the most part, uh, they're eukaryotic. Um, they are usually unicellular. Um, there are some of them that are multicellular, but there's no specialized tissues. That is, they don't have parts like we would have parts. And some of them do cellular respiration. Some of them do uh, uh, photosynthesis. And so you know them as protozoas and amoebas and paramecium's and hydras and euglena, those sort of things. Okay. Um, Mostly we know them, unfortunately, by their diseases, so I'd like you to learn a couple of them. This is the one that so often comes up, Plasmodium. Plasmodium is the protista that causes malaria, very nasty disease. And this is kind of the life cycle of how it works. So the plasmodium, or the spores of it, they are carried in a female mosquito who's called Anopheles. You should know that. And they're carried in the salivary glands. And when this mosquito bites you, during summertime we get those terrible bites, it injects in its saliva into you. And with it comes the spores. And the spores then travel and they grow in our liver. Once they grow enough in the liver, the plasmodium are released into our blood and they infect the red blood cells and they grow there. And it's at that stage, we get those terrible toxins who are released here, which cause that fever and chills. Actually, I think it's called a goo. It's uh, A-G-U-E. It's a funny, terrible feeling uh, that's particular to malaria. Now along comes a new mosquito, and it uh, bites you again. And this time, after it injects in the saliva, it picks up blood. That was the whole point for this blood. Now carries all of these plasmodiums. So they were using us as a host, right? Once inside the mosquito, the plasmodium travel to the gut of the mosquito, and they mature there. And finally, they go back to, to salivary glands, and we're back to the beginning, unfortunately. Uh, Giardia. For those of you who have ever done some camping or backpacking, you always hear, like, be careful drinking the water. You know, you should boil it or filter it first. It's because it has a um, protista called Giardia in there. This guy lives in our intestines, and, uh, boy, it's hard to get rid of, and terrible diarrhea stomach cramps that this guy causes. Um, everybody's favorite, amoebic dysentery. That's why they always say, you know, dig those latrines downstream from where you're cooking food, right? Because you don't want this stuff to get into the water. This is an amoeba, and uh, when it gets in the water, it lives in our intestines and it causes terrible, terrible diarrhea, amoebic dysentery. And it can be bad enough to kill you. You've got to watch out. Here's a really interesting one, uh, trypanosoma. Trypanosoma, that's a protista that causes a disease called African sleeping sickness. Kind of fall asleep, but you don't wake up. Um, unlike the mosquito, it travels in a different guy this time. It travels in the tsetse fly in Africa. And when the tsetse fly buys, bites an animal, including humans, it injects this trypsinoma uh, microbe into us through the salivary glands. Once again, it goes to our blood. So here's a bunch of blood cells, and there's our nasty guy in there. And so you can see the relative size of it to the blood cell. And uh, it infects us and causes a sleeping disease. And then the fly comes along, uh, takes a blood meal from us, and carries it on to somebody else. Okay, I think that pretty much carries uh, the basic ideas of what I want you to know for protein